Okay. So first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for invitation. I'll be talking about integrable systems with balanced loss and gain. And uh, this talk is based on the papers I have done with my PhD student, Devdeep uh, Sinha, for last one year. Devdeep is also present in the audience. And uh, although the title is quite general, Integrable Systems with Balanced Loss and Gain, I will not be covering any field theoretical examples or dimers or oligomers or discrete lattice system or spin systems. I will be mainly concerned about, say, many particle classical systems and their quantum parts. Now, brief overview of the talk is the following. First, I will try to motivate you why we want to study integrable systems with balanced loss and gain. And then uh, the history of studying such systems quite long. In fact, in 1931, Batman tried to formulate Hamiltonian uh, for a dissipative harmonic oscillators. And although over the last eight years, many works have been done on particularly Batman oscillator, oscillator classical or quantum, uh, for generalization of systems, say, take any dissipative systems, how to formulate uh, Hamiltonian uh, system for that or not uh, is lacking. And then, uh, uh, then I'll be talking about that Batman oscillator, uh, uh, if we include coupling between the dissipative part uh, and a, uh, a, a system uh, and the bath coupling, then there is a possibility that it might admit equilibrium state and uh, these equilibrium states in different physical systems are very relevant for the present investigations in the context of so-called heterosymmetric theories. And uh, what I'll be doing is that next I will give a Hamiltonian formulation for generic systems, generic in the sense that any number of particles, any kind of potential, and uh, also that dissipation term is space dependent. And uh, Basically, uh, even if we don't specify what is the form of the potential or what specific system I'm talking about, this Hamiltonian formulation allows some generic features, model independent generic features. So I'll be summarizing these generic features. And then I'll show that balanced loss and gain system can be interpreted as an effective system in the background of some inhomogeneous magnetic field. So dissipation, balanced loss, will have some interpretation in terms of magnetic field. And next, I'll be talking how to quantize the systems. Then I'll be talking about two different classes of integrable systems related to underlying translational symmetry and rotational symmetry. And then finally, I'll be talking about some examples. In fact, the formula, uh, formulation is such that for the case of translationally invariant system, one can have as many uh, uh, solvable system, uh, uh, well, no, let me formulate it. If there is a known exactly solvable system, one can embed that within the balanced loss and gain system. For that, in presence of balanced loss and gain, this becomes exactly solvable. But I will not be talking about all these examples. I'll be talking about one or two examples to compare the results obtained for this particular example with the known results in the literature. And then, finally, I'll be presenting a calorie type models. Calorie type models in the sense it shares some general features with the celebrated calorie model, but it's not exactly calorie model. But in presence of balanced loss and gain term, and I'll show that for any n particle system, one can find exact solution at the classical level as well as at the quantum level. Not only that, one can compute any many particle correlation functions, two-point correlation function, four-point correlation functions, by mapping these results to rational Calogero model and also known results in random matrix theory. And then finally, I'll summarize my uh, findings. Okay, so all of you know that uh, there are several advant advantages of uh, having a Hamiltonian system. Namely, uh, we can uh, use canonical perturbation theory, canonical quantization, 
Also, we can apply CAM theory. That is basically if for an integrable system there is an invariant tori, and if we apply perturbation system perturbation, then how this invariant tori remains uh, invariant or get uh, destroyed? That's part of the CAM theory. And then also application of geometric mechanics and tools for studying phase transitions in configuration space. And there are many. I mean, maybe there are some personal choice uh, of an individual. Now, so all these reasons necessitates Hamiltonian for dissipative systems. And I like to mention that when Batmel formulated this Hamiltonian for the dissipative oscillator, apart from the first reason, CAM theory was not developed. Even the geometric mechanics and this phase transition in configuration space were well developed much later. Even uh, one in the uh, late 50s, last century, and the other one maybe as late as 1995 or some, uh, around that time. And if uh, we consider a system and bath, then we get Hamiltonian with balance loss and gain. And primary objectives in this talk will be giving a systematic method for constructing H for any number of particles and any potential. And then, is there any A in any H where we can find equilibrium state? And then finally, some models, whether they are integrable or not. I like to mention here that for testing whether a system is integrable or not, there are very well-known methods like Laxberg formalism and then Penelope analysis. I will not be doing any kind of, uh, no, I will not be using any kind of techniques here. Simply, uh, I will try to see that whether we can map some system in presence of balance loss and gain with some known results so that the integrability or exact solvability is obtained. Okay, so this is 1931. Batman, whatever he wanted to do is that Suppose there is a dissipative harmonic oscillator, how to find Hamiltonian system for that? And his idea was to consider a time diverse version of that original oscillator so that that system plus bath, when you uh, take them together, uh, for the combined system, we get a Hamiltonian. And this is the uh, form of the Hamiltonian. As you can see, Auxiliary oscillator, you can construct a Lagrangian and Hamiltonian. Without a? Uh, auxiliary oscillator. Yeah. You can construct a Lagrangian and Hamiltonian, yes. time independent Lagrangian and Hamiltonian. Yes. It is not necessary that you have to have a bath. No, I am talking, uh, I am, you see that for the construction of Hamiltonian, there are different approaches, even including e to the power minus gamma t. Uh, no, it is a time independent Lagrangian and yeah, Hamiltonian. Yeah. I am just following Batman prescription because my primary objectives is to find uh, integrable systems. So apart from Hamiltonian, I'll be considering many other uh, constants of motion, number one. Number two, my second motivation is that when I take the distribution parameter goes to zero, it should reduce to my uh, system without uh, the distribution. Okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, whatever you are talking about, uh, 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 maybe uh, today only, but different. I mean, the different formulation has different advantages, and I'm following the whole of my talk, the Batman prescription and uh, appropriate modification. Now, note that Batman oscillator, this uh, gain and oscillator are equally balanced, namely, this 2 gamma, the coefficient of the x dot term, and minus 2 gamma of the y dot term. If they are not equally balanced, one cannot have uh, Hamiltonian for the system. So, uh, this is very important. Number two, incidentally, the Batman oscillator is also PT symmetric. So, if you take T goes to minus T and P, X goes to Y, Y goes to X, then we can see that, that Batman Hamiltonian is PT symmetric. But for this case, we don't get any equilibrium state because there is one oscillator with positive damping and the another oscillator with negative damping. So system plus bath, the energy is conserved. The energy, uh, either for the, if we consider system alone or the bath alone, but the, there is no conservation of energy. Okay. Now, system buck coupling. Suppose, if we want to have some coupling so that system and bath are coupled, then it necessarily, uh, sorry, if you want to have Hamiltonian formulation for 
any nonlinear system, then essentially there is a coupling. We cannot avoid that. For example, uh, you can see that I have uh, written down one Hamiltonian HB plus YFX. YFX is the some kind of uh, potential part. And the equations of motion following from this is that one addition f of x for the x equation and another addition f prime x for the y equation. f of x is nonlinear, so we can see that first part uh, describing say cubic uh, nonlinear cubic nonlinear oscillator with uh, damping or any other uh, nonlinear interaction potential. But note that the equation for y is the linear one because there is only f prime x. And once we solve for x, so it becomes, y equation becomes a time dependent. The solutions of f gives a contribution as a time dependent coefficient for the oscillator y. Now, for this system, we don't expect any equilibrium state. And this kind of coupling uh, uh, is called unidirectional coupling, where the system is not coupled to the bath, but the bath, solution of bath, uh, is uh, dependent on the solution of uh, system variables. Bidirectional coupling is achieved when we add, instead of some specific form y f of x, a v of x y, and if we define the partial derivative v x as del, uh, del v del x and del v del y, if v x and v y depend on both x and y, then uh, basically that f of x, that term contributes to del v del y, and f prime x comes from del v del x. Okay. So if first uh, partial derivative of Vx and Vy depend on both x and y, we get a coupled system. Uh, both x is coupled to y and y is coupled to y. And for such systems, there is a possibility of obtaining equilibrium state for certain regions in the parameter space. Note that Vxy is not necessarily pt symmetric for the Hamiltonian formulation. And consequently, h need not be pt symmetric. Okay, just give me one example before I uh, jump on this uh, general construction. Say, consider that potential as epsilon 1x squared plus epsilon 2y squared and the inverse square uh, coupling, and uh, these are equations of uh, motion. Note that this potential or the Hamiltonian is pt symmetric only for epsilon 1 is equal to epsilon 2. If epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are not identical, it's not pt symmetric. Nevertheless, one can find a con uh, equilibrium state within that region. Uh, that gamma is bounded uh, by minus omega naught by 2 and omega naught by 2 and the product epsilon 1 epsilon 2 is greater than 0 and also there are some other conditions. And this model in limit, certain limiting cases uh, has already been studied. So if epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are equal to minus omega naught square, then this is A2 type rational Calogero model, two body Calogero model. If epsilon and epsilon 2 both vanishes, then this is a Sutherland variant of the model, Sutherland variant in the sense there is inverse square interaction, but the harmonic interaction is not pairwise, but it's a confinement in a common harmonic oscillator potential. If epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and g is equal to 0, then basically the, this reduces to the uh, Bender and his collaborator's paper, which explains uh, 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 some experimental uh, results on cu uh, coupled oscillator modes. Now, one interesting thing about this model is that the rational Calogero model limit and the coupled oscillator model exactly solvable and exact periodic solutions can be calculated analytically both at the classical level as well as the quantum level. Now, <clears throat> now based on uh, these observations, we would like to ask the question that suppose we have a coupled, uh, a set of coupled differential equations given by this whether we can have Hamiltonian formulation or not. Now, note that I have introduced a space-dependent coefficient for the xi-dependent term. This is to in include Van der Poel oscillator or similar kind of things, which are very relevant for, uh, for uh, studying relaxation oscillation phenomena in neurological uh, neto network, different biological models, economical, uh, uh, economics. OK. <clears throat> now, even if we take rotating wave approximation, we can reduce this set of equations to oligomers, which are very important for photonics. If we analyze the phase space flow, then conservative system implies that particular equation that sum of eta i uh, over i is equal to 1 to n is equal to 0. Now, if 
all eta r is equal to 0, then of course xi double dot plus gi uh, for this system we have a Hamiltonian provided the gi is a derivable from some common potential v. Now the question is that if at least one eta i not is equal to 0, is it a Hamiltonian system? And if yes, is there any systematic procedure to construct it? Now, I like to mention here that for unidirectional coupling, one can apply in a straightforward way Batman's prescription, and one can get Hamiltonian for any many body system. There is no problem. Surprisingly, I have searched the literature, there is no work in this regard that through unidirectional coupling, formulate Hamiltonian for the general dissipative system and try to try to apply the techniques associated with Hamiltonian formulation. The second part, bidirectional coupling, is much more involved. Batman's straightforward applications will not give you anything for n greater than two. For n is equal to two, everything is fine. But if n is greater than two, even n is equal to three or four, it's much more complicated. So our first task will be to give a general formalism. So you consider an n particle system, and this is just a notation that x1, x2, I construct a column matrix similarly for the momenta and the vector field f, which are functions of the coordinates. And I define generalized momenta pi as p plus a f, where a is a constant matrix. And uh, note that curly a is equal to a f, that may be interpreted as gauge potential. And when I will be showing the connection with uh, or interpretation in terms of magnetic field, this term will be very useful. Now, Hamiltonian, I have this form, where M is non-singular constant matrix. Now, I am excluding any constant system. Uh, yes. Generalized. Why you say that, gene and that you define the, the, the generalized momenta like this? I mean, it's not the consequences of... Uh, Hamilton's Lagrange. Yeah, yeah, it's a, no, uh, we, we start with this form and then we'll see that it will be a consequence of the... Uh, so it's uh, consistent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I exclude any constant system. I also exclude a uh, dissipative system where the dissipation term depends on higher powers of velocity. So it's linear in velocity. Now, M is a symmetric matrix. Now, using Hamilton's equation of motion, we get these second order uh, uh, differential equations. Now, note that the D is defined in terms of M. M appears in the definition of Hamiltonian, but R is defined in terms of A and J. Uh, and A appears in the definition of generalized momenta. And note that J is defined as, matrix elements of J are defined as del Fi, del Xj, ijth element, okay? And del V uh, uh, means that del V del X1, del V del X2, that's a column matrix. Now note that we have assumed that M is symmetric, and that's quite a reasonable assumption. R, we have not made any assumption, but R is anti-symmetric. Okay, AJ minus AJ transpose. Now, we want that coefficient of Xi dot should be diagonal. So D is symmetric. Even if we don't assume D is uh, uh, diagonal, but simply D is symmetric, then we see that M transpose, M is symmetric, R is anti-symmetric, D is symmetric. Just by using these relations, one can show that M, R, and D, they anti with each other. Once they anti with each other, then it's trivial to show that trace of D and trace of M is equal to zero. R is anti-symmetric anyway, its trace is equal to zero. So trace of D is equal to zero essentially implies that if we want to have Hamiltonian system, the loss and gain must be balanced. But the next question is that balancing may be in different ways. Say, lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 minus lambda 4 such that lambda 4 is summation of lambda 1 plus lambda 2 lambda 3. But due to, again, anti-symmetric relations, it's a pairwise balancing. For each gain term, there is a corresponding loss term, equally balanced. Note that one can again use those relations to show that for even n, determinant uh, d, uh, no, th this relation is uh, uh, general, determinant d, 1 minus to the power n, and from there we can see that for n even, determinant d can be chosen to be non-zero, but for odd n, 
determinant of D must be equal to zero. So at least one of the eigenvalues of determinant D should be equal to zero. So again, pair is uh, balancing. Now, another general feature is that M is a real symmetric matrix, so we can diagonalize it and uh, through orthogonal matrix. Now, the diagonal matrix is MD, and again, anti commutation relation with, uh, of M with R and D, one can show that eigenvalues of M are. M appears in pair, lambda 1 minus lambda 1, lambda 2 minus lambda 2. So that means we can always reformulate the problem in a pseudo Euclidean plane. Now, in terms of uh, these changed uh, variables, x tilde, p tilde, pi tilde, h uh, can be written down where the kinetic energy parts are in diagonal form. Now, how do you find the representation of these matrices M, D, and R? There are several possibilities. I am just choosing a particular one suitable for my talk. Say, so M I take as I M, uh, M uh, cross M identity matrix, Kronecker product with the Pauli spin matrix sigma x, and similarly for A and D. Everything is known except for chi M. Chi M is a diagonal matrix whose diagonal elements are Q Y, which are functions of x1, x2, and xn. So we have to specify this, otherwise the representation is complete. In order to do so, we use this relation d is equal to m of r. Then this reduces to the next equation. Now, instead of solving this equation for general j, we make here some assumptions. Because our representation of the matrix is such that 2i minus 1th particle is balanced with 2i particle. So it's natural to assume that space dependent balance gas and long uh, gas uh, gain and loss term should depend on x to i minus 1 and x to i coordinates with these assumptions j has this simple form and the, our result is that qa qa means is the qa is somewhere is trace of vat qa means that diagonal elements of i okay so once we have determined this q we have uniquely specified the representation. For odd number of particles 2m plus 1, what we do is that we embed this even dimensional system in the higher dimensional 2m plus 1 systems by, take, by adding one row and adding one column to each matrices such that uh, all i 2m plus 1th and 2m plus 1th elements are 0 except for the m whose m 2m plus 1, 2m plus 1 is non-zero. So basically there is no dissipation or gain or lo loss term associated with the 2m plus 1th particle, but that particle interacts with all other particles through the common potential. The potential have to be uh, chosen that way. Okay, now an interpretation. Say, I said that the m can be diagonalized. Now for this particular representation, the matrix O, which diagonalizes M, has this particular form. And this orthogonal matrix generates the coordinate transformations. And the new coordinates are Zi plus minus, Pi Zi plus minus, and also the, uh, the field uh, Fi are defined as Fi plus minus. Now, in terms of these uh, new variables, Hamiltonian can be written as this form. So one can see that gamma by 2 fi minus uh, 1 with plus sign for the pj plus term and 1 with minus sign for the pj minus term can be interpreted as some gauge potential. And it will give rise to some external inhomogeneous magnetic field. And we'll see that ma uh, magnetic field has this particular expression that qi is equal to del fi plus del zi plus plus del fi minus del zi minus. We'll see that space dependent balance loss and gain coefficient has the same form of qi so the magnetic field if the magnetic field is uniform then it defines a system with uniform gain loss parameter if the gain loss parameter depends on uh, space uh, variables then magnetic field also depends on space variables oh, okay so one more thing here so note that one uh, may be uncomfortable with this minus sign. Basically, this will give rise to uh, non arbitrary in the corresponding quantum problem. But note that uh, here we can do some uh, imaginary scaling, which is uh, uh, which appeared in many places, including Pius-Uhlenbeck oscillator. 
if you do imaginary scaling and allow fi minus fi plus to be complex, then basically this can be mapped to systems with complex gauge potentials. Of course, here since we have written fi minus fi plus as general one, one can impose further restrictions so that fi plus fi minus and v is chosen, chosen in a such a way that even after imaginary scaling, they are real. Okay, so this possibility is there. So dissipation is related to uh, analogous magnetic field. Not only the, uh, not only that, this kind of system can also be related to system with complex gauge potentials. Okay, from the expression of QI, you see that for different choices of Fi minus and Fi plus, one can have same Q. So that means there is some gauge degrees of freedom, and in fact, there is gauge degrees of freedom, keeping the magnetic field the same. And the effect of that is that say, whatever Hamilton and I have written down, corresponding Lagrangian is of this form, basically corresponding to a gauge transformation which keeps the form of the magnetic field identical, the corresponding Lagrangians differ by total time derivative. And equations of motion, either from the Lagrangian or from the Hamiltonian, has, a, has this particular form. And again note, that the coefficient of the gain loss term is qi, which is the expression of the magnetic field. Okay, so quantization is uh, uh, typical uh, z plus minus i and z uh, i uh, pz i plus minus uh, is equal to minus i del z i plus minus, standard coordinate representation for the momentum variables. And of course, we're assuming here h bar is equal to 1, and they satisfy the standard commutation relations. Now, generalized moment of pi j i plus minus has this particular representation, and if we calculate the commutator of pi j i plus minus hat, we see that again, even at the quantum level, the appearance of magnetic field uh, like interpretation qi, because if you're working with uh, external magnetic fields, then pi i, pi j, they give rise to the magnetic field. Now, in general, H is non-Hermitian for standard boundary condition because of this uh, minus uh, sign. Nevertheless, as I argued earlier, that through imaginary scale transformation, one can map it to uh, systems like complex gauge potential that is known there, that uh, real eigenvalues, the unitary time evolution, everything is possible there. So there is a hope here also. Moreover, whatever we'll be talking here is that we'll show that for certain examples, this, uh, although these non-Hermitian normalizable eigenfunctions can be obtained in appropriate stroke wages. And corresponding to classical gauge transformations, one can switch from one form of Hamiltonian to other form of Hamiltonian through unitary transformations, where the uh, unitary transformation uh, is performed by this particular uh, operator. Now, uh, before I solve particular problems, it's about integrability. So translational invariant systems are defined by V, which are function of Z i minus alone. Similarly, the magnetic field is also function of Z i minus alone. Note that Z i minus is defined as difference of x 2 i minus 1 and minus 2 i. So if we translate x 2 i minus and x 2 i, Z i remains invariant and it's independent of Z i plus. So uh, uh, the whole system remains invariant under this transformation. But here there are eta, uh, m number of eta parameters, so corresponding to each parameter, we'll get one concept quantity. And if one ca calculates that integral sub motion, then this has this particular form, and one can check by calculating the partial bracket of h with pi i and among pi i and pi j's that they are equal to zero. So we have m plus one number of integrals of motion for a system with 2m degrees of freedom. So for m greater than one, this is a partial integrable system, but for m is equal to one, we need two integrals of motion, and we have obtained that. Now, similar results, if we take v as a function of Zi minus alone, and q as a function of Zi minus alone, as a function of Zi plus alone, both v and uh, f, we'll get similar results, and in fact, one can show, uh, by knowing the results for that particular system, one can obtain the results for this particular system. There is some duality uh, symmetry between uh, these two kinds of things, uh, these two, two, two kinds of models. And of course, for the quantum integrability, if we consider 
the same condition for the quantum theory, then just simply, uh, if we promote the Poisson bracket to the commutator, then again everything goes through. So under the same condition, the quant corresponding quantum model are also integrable. Now, second class of integrable system corresponds to uh, rotational symmetry, but rotational symmetry in the uh, hyperbolic coordinate. So that's why I uh, use the parameterization of coordinates in terms of this. And symmetry transformation for this particular is the hyperbol hyperbolic rotation in each okay. Jedi minus Jedi place plane. And of course, the condition is that uh, uh, potential as well as that uh, gauge potential, they are function of R1 and Rm. Again, the integral of motion can be calculated in this following form. And uh, uh, they uh, classically, the Poisson commute and quantum mechanically, they are commuted and vanishes. So again, the result is that for any arbitrary m, it's partially integrable with m plus one number of integrals of motion. And for uh, m is equal to two, it's uh, exactly integrable. Now, I don't have much time. So, uh, so, so classical model, simply that if, if uh, there are many examples, if we choose this uh, particular form, then you can see there is a typographical error that should be equation. Jedi minus dot uh, alpha z1 minus q is equal to zero. This is just standard cubic uh, oscillator, and many of its solutions, are, all of its solutions are known in different pa uh, parameter regions. And Jedi plus depends on uh, simply integration of Jedi minus. And there are non-singular solutions, periodic solutions uh, in the ranges where gamma is bounded uh, by minus omega naught to plus omega naught and omega square greater than zero. And B, where this part is interesting because say, uh, Bender et et al, they have considered some models where it is known that gamma is bounded, and those are linear theories. But here, this nonlinear term, note that gamma is not bounded for solution, uh, uh, B-type B solution, okay? Gamma has no upper bound. So dissipation parameter, basically balance loss and gain parameter, can take any values, still we can have periodic bounded solution. So effect of the nonlinearity is that. And this is uh, the exact solution. Okay, and then, uh, uh, Probably I will skip that. This is an example of a nonlinear chain of oscillator. Again, there, is a, uh, there, there are results in the literature that if you con consider uh, a symmetric chain of nonlinear oscillators, then as the number of sites increases, the region of unbroken PT gets squeezed. Okay? But here, for uh, this particular model, we have exact solution where the distribution parameter, uh, the this, uh, unbroken PT regime is valid for any n number of particles. So again, the, the, this is different from whatever uh, there are known results. Then finally, uh, this is the example of a calogeric type models. This is exactly solvable at the classical level and quantum level, some particular sector, all the eigenfunctions can be calculated. And 2 point, 4 point, 6 point correlation functions can be calculated for this model, quantum correlation functions. Okay, so there are many differences with this, uh, with the standard Calogero model, or if you know that Calogero model uh, introduced almost 50 years back, a class of models for the many-body interaction uh, scales inverse squarely, and say centrifugal barrier is like one by R square potential, and then uh, dipole uh, interaction also one by R square, so it appears many where, including black holes, spin chains, uh, uh, it's an example of conformal quantum mechanics, supersymmetric theory, and uh, quantum wire, host of uh, uh, models. And there is some, this belongs to some university class because of this one by R square potential. So we call it Calogero type because of this one by R square nature. But there are differences also. Say, uh, over. okay. So the Calogero model is permutation symmetric. This is not permutation symmetric. Okay, and uh, then uh, Calogero model introduced two body interaction here, it's introduced four body interaction. So there are many differences also. Nevertheless, uh, uh, we see that these are the equations of motion, and when we express this in terms of Jedi variables, the Jedi plus decouples from the theory and is determined in terms of Jedi minus, simple one integration. But for Jedi plus, we have the standard Calogero model equations of motion. This is exactly solvable, so we can solve the original uh, model with four body interaction. So for the quantum theory, we just use this particular form using unity transformation I talked uh, previously because this is suitable for uh, box normalization. 
and again the standard computation relations. Now we can use separation of variables by uh, this uh, modes due to transform symmetry are factored out in terms of uh, psi. This is the equation, and so uh, exact eigenvalues gamma are restricted within some regions. That's the eigenvalues, and spectrum is uh, partly continuous, partly uh, discrete. But we want to have quantum correlation function, so along Zi plus directions for which it's a continuous vector, we can use box normalization. And if we use box normalization, so this is the form of the energy. Okay. Now, the problem is that if you look at the, uh, I will take one minute. Okay. If you uh, look at the energy eigenvalue expression, then it's not bounded from below unless omega less than zero. If omega less than zero, then only it's bounded from below. But if you look at the asymptotic form of the wave function, I have not given the explicit form of uh, the detail wave function. The asymptotic form, then you can see that this is not normalizable. Okay. But what you can do here is that uh, if we uh, go to the complex plane, then try to find particular stoke wedges where this is normalizable or not. And the general condition is that sum of i is equal to 1 to m cos 2 theta i less than 0. There are various solutions. One particular solution is that theta is equal to constant for uh, all theta, and then we get a stoke wedges like this. This is real, and this is imagine a Jedi. So this angle is pi by two. Okay. Now, okay. So one can calculate correlation function just mapping it to Galagero model and random matrix theory results with the following in inputs that integration over all Jedi minus variables should be performed in this particular stoke wedges because along uh, uh, within that stoke wedge only it's uh, normalizable and contribution coming from Jedi plus uh, should be taken into account and if we do that then we see that normalization constant varies as L to the power minus M by 2 that is expected and then we see that this is the form of the exact correlation function. Only one difference is that for the original X problem, only even point correlation functions can be calculated exactly, namely 2, 4, 6, 8. Because if you remember the coordinate transformation, two coordinates are coupled together to get Jedi minus. Okay? So for the Calogero model, it may be even, uh, even point correlation function, odd point correlation function, but it's multiplied by 2 for the original problem, so it's always uh, uh, even number of uh, even point coordination function for the original character model. Okay, so uh, this is just to summarize. So I may just skip. Thank you very much. Uh, we have time for uh, maybe one quick question. Yes. Potential which you had, I think you called it V2, and you called it Calodro type model. Are you sure this isn't just a Calodro model for another algebra? Because mostly you talk about AN Calodros. Could this not be just another algebra? Algebra? Yes. Why do Calodro you... models are formula, can be formulated in terms of roots of algebras. No, no, I didn't. Well, I said explicitly, yes. that why do I call it Calodro type? Yes. Because the potential scales, scales, scales like 1 by x square. Yes. Okay. So, say so if you look at the Calogero type models, basically it's a Weierstrass elliptic function with two periods. And at I different understand. limits. My question is simpler. Is, is it it's just about the naming of if it's not a known model? No. Just related. Uh, if you are talking about whether there is an underlying root structure. Yes, that's no. what I mean. No. The reduced system has underlying root structure. Mm. Say, originally I have. M is, uh, n is equal to 2m, okay? So there is no root structure. Mm -hmm. And even I cannot talk about whole permutation symmetry S2n, but subgroup of it, Sm, okay? So there is no root system for the original problem, but mm -hmm. when we reduce it to in terms of Jedi variables, then there is a root structure, and one can extend to BCN, DN, or even trigonometric hyperbolic, whatever one wants. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, we'll move on and uh, let's thank the speaker again.